Claire Davis and I am back with Mental Health Chats and today we have got the lovely Jo Richardson with us. Hello Jo, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. The sun is shining, all is well. Yes, it's so good when the sun shines. So would you like to tell everyone where you are, where the sun is shining please? I'm currently sat in Nottingham, not, not New York, I'm slightly <laughs> deceptive there. Um, yes, I'm currently sat in Nottingham, it's glorious, quite a nice day. Lovely. And Joe and I have got a really, really great talk today. I love this one because it's all about performing teams. And if we have performing teams, that equals happy teams who stay so that we can retain them, which is so important. And the work you do with your clients is so important about this. So would you like to tell us all um, what your experience is and what you do, Joe? Yeah, so my background is I spent 10 years working in the food and drink industry um, in a commercial role. Then I had had enough of it. So I contacted Michael Page and said, can you get me a job? And I went to work yeah. for Michael Page recruiting into the food and drink industry. And after a couple of years, I thought I'm going to do that myself. So I've been working for myself for the last 10 years as a recruitment company, um, or recruitment agency, um, internal um, freelance talent acquisition, and also do some coaching as well. Brilliant. And what I love about recruitment companies like yourself is the fact that you're not looking for organisations that have high staff turnover because just to fill a job because they're actually harder to place for. And we've had this mm -hmm. conversation before. You're looking more for organisations who have great performing teams so that people mm -hmm. stay uh, because they're actually then growing and they're much easier to make placements with, which is brilliant. So let's get on to our First question on that. So what are the benefits of a team to be performing at their best, Joe? Oh, benefits to a team. I like this one. It's. It, I think the example here that I'm thinking of is um, I recruit for one client, client in particular, and one of their core values is very much about um, ambition and progression, mm -hmm. and they want people to be ambitious. And how they demonstrate that is I constantly be recruiting for somebody to to move up so I recruit it for us to be a junior level and you can constantly see the progression of people and it really gives the whole culture the whole vibe of an organization mm. um really strong foundations I think and I, I think that. and it lives and breathes their values so when you are talking about an organization you you know what they are saying is absolutely true and you can feel it yeah so I love, yeah. I love the fact that you talked about the culture there. And I Very also nice. love the fact that you talked about the fact that they live and breathe their culture and mm. their values because so often I go into organisation, their values are written all up on the walls and they're not living and breathing them. And you, and you think this culture, the atmosphere is so blah. Yeah. What they have to do is live and breathe the values that are up yeah. on the Definitely. And I... And I also think it's really important for a candidate to know their values as well. So when they are joining an organisation, do those values match? If they don't, can you compromise and does it still feel OK? Because even if they don't, it's OK. Yeah. yeah. But if it's so mismatched and nobody's given any thought, not having a good, solid team can be damaging to not only to an individual team, but to a huge business and the culture. The, the impact is huge. Yeah, definitely. And that, that goes on to um, my next thought, and it's all about navigating. At the moment, it's so hard to navigate a hiring landscape because there's such a shield, <laughs> shield shortage out there. So yeah. for organisation, what, what are the problems if teams don't perform at their best? Oh, my God, it could be chaos. It can be chaos. I That's saw big word chaos. <laughs> I'm not organized chaos. I saw um, a statistic actually recently, a conference I went to, and it said something like a replacing somebody in an organization, put it bluntly, could take up to on average, it takes 28 weeks and cost 25,000 yeah. pounds in yeah. lost productivity. Yeah. And that's just basing one role, one person in one team. That's not then the ripple effect yeah. of the person doing the job because yeah. it's not yeah. just that immediate team, it's all the departments as well. Um, yeah. 
getting it wrong is just yeah it, it's mega it, it really is yeah. really impactful for the team the morale the day-to-day -day, the cost of the business yeah. service level but, so so the stat that i quote is from the REC, the Recruitment Employment Confederation. Oh, it might be that. Yeah, and it's actually two and a half times someone's salary at least. So wow. You're twenty five thousand pounds just to replace oh, them. Then. But it's the <laughs> knowledge. It's the it's, yes. it's the knock on. It's the fact that you need to train someone up so they're not producing as quickly, um, and they're not producing as much. Their performance isn't as good until they've been trained up. So it's it's huge. It's absolutely huge. It is, and it's, and you can't compare like for like. So I remember no. working in a um, M&S cake factory years ago, and <laughs> they had a huge restructure, and they got rid of a lot of people with very unique skill set in the factory. Mm. Mm. So it's stuff that couldn't be handed over or yeah. taught. The impact was service level. It was the impact was product not on a shelf. The impact was mm. threat of losing business. I mean, it, yeah. it, and you're thinking, hang on, it's some people in a factory. Wow, never think that. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Mega. Um, yeah. We can't make the assumption in organisations that it's going to be easy to replace someone. Let's just get rid of them. They're causing us a few problems. It's going to be easy to replace them. That's so old school. And I yeah. remember looking for an organization who actually believed that. And it was, oh, the frustration, the stress of having to keep in, um, recruiting and recruiting and recruiting and training and training and mentoring and mentoring. It was exhausting. Yeah. It was it is. exhausting. And we've all sat there and said, oh, we're better off doing it myself. Mm. Yeah. No, we wouldn't be. <laughs> we yeah. wouldn't be. Who are we kidding? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's it's really interesting. You just remind me of some of the clients that I work with, and some of them, you know, there's four stages of a team and building a team, and some of them find it quite difficult to get their teams to the final stage, which is the performing stage. We don't want to just get them at the forming stage. We want them at the performing stage. So mm. how can, with all the teams that you're been working with, how can teams actually work together to maximize their potential and keep them happy so they stay so they reach yeah, that wow. stage i think yes the team's so important but you need to break mm. it down to the individual each yeah. individual so things like disc profiling and yeah. insights what how do people work what yeah. makes them tick what motivates yeah. them and sometimes feel a lot of it is miscommunication if somebody yes. hears something different to how somebody said it yeah it's yeah. very much learning how you and I would communicate how do you listen how do you learn yeah. how do I listen how do yeah. I learn and really break it down to the individual so I've known organizations that have worked with insights and they've had the color of who they are and how they work on yeah. their desk so yeah. if you walk up and you go, well, there, there's a yellow person. I know I need to communicate this, this and this. Yeah. So, yeah. again, it's down to foundations. What yeah. makes each individual tick and then how can you build it? Because yeah. everybody thinks and works differently. That's yeah. that's a blessing and a curse in a team. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. I've worked with Insights a lot as well. And I, I actually um, help clients understand their behaviours and how to adapt to behaviours. It's all about adapting. And I've, I've um, actually now become qualified as a positive intelligence coach, which oh, is you. absolutely enthralling because it actually Brilliant. looks at things on a deeper level even more. So it looks at mm. what your saboteurs are, what's holding you back, yep. how to overcome them, and in your team, how to actually use your positive brain. And it's so powerful because... Um, you know, we, we talk about the saboteurs, the positive brain, and it's moves. It's all exercise to move your muscles to the positive brain. So what I found with the clients I've worked with, it's really helped increase relationships, improve relationships. And if we improve <laughs> relationships, we're going to improve our well-being, which is fantastic. And if Absolutely. we improve our relationships and well-being, our performance, oh, just goes, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. That. It's absolutely yeah. So yeah, it's getting to know your client, your 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 
colleagues, but also getting to know your clients as well. Yeah. yeah. And getting to know yourself. And getting to know yourself. <laughs> Definitely. What makes yeah. you tick? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and even when I if I would commu communicate with somebody who is really technical and really into the detail, yeah. that's not necessarily me, but I know I need to communicate with like the top three bullet points. And I think that's really Yeah. Yeah. We can't all be rigid in the current climate. No. I, I, yeah. And, and you've just reminded me, um, a saying my mother used to say growing up was treat people the way you want to be treated. And when yeah. I deliver behavioral styles, I actually go, ah, uh -uh. we treat people the way they want to be treated. Oh, we adapt to them. I like and, that. Yeah. And it's yeah. so powerful when you get that mindset. Adapt. Yes. You know, I'm somebody who. You know, I love working with people who go right into the detail because I don't go right into the detail. Yeah. They encourage me. So it's yeah. using those benefits, the positives, the strengths of yeah. other people and adapting as a team, definitely. Yeah. And you've just triggered me with a memory that I had with my mum. I wish she'll, she'll probably never watch this, but um, <laughs> she, her and I went through a phase of really miscommunicating and we stripped it back to our, our love languages. And yeah. how she likes to, how I was showing her love was not how she receives it. Yeah, so, yeah. and That's trying so to powerful. sit down to to a mum who was in her seventies, bless her, going, "Mum, just bear with me. Can we just?" Mm. It's transformed our relationship. Yeah. It really has. Well, the so. love language is so interesting, isn't it? I love yeah. that as well. Yeah. Oh, you've been so insightful, Joe. I don't want to rush <laughs> you off. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we wind up and? find out where people can find you you've been so helpful no I just I mean I think for me being a coach and being coached has transformed mm. the way I see um and it's not recruitment it is retention it is looking after the yeah. people you've yeah. got and it is mm. just because somebody in the organization if somebody leaves the ripple effect is huge mm -hmm. don't get to the point where they leave look after them nurture them definitely and it's yeah it's very yeah, much worth it i i love i love it when you say it's not recruitment it's retention and if we retain yeah. our, our, our teams they'll perform better so then we can grow and recruit because we're growing we're performing so well so that's exactly really brilliant thank you so Thanks. much so i'm sure there's lots of people out there who would love to find out where is joe richardson where can i find you to get some help um joe richardson winhurst recruitment i am on linkedin so i think if you just put joe richardson winhurst recruitment i'm on there um yeah or joe at winhurstrecruitment.co.uk if you want to drop me an email that's fantastic, Joe. Thank you so much for all your help and your insights. You're welcome. Well, thank and you for inviting me along today. Thank you and take care. See you later.